Previously, on Realms of Nerds, The Return of Ornon. So, Josh and me, the book that you have opened, you've quickly realized that from, from the beginning of the book onward, this is an entire recorded history of your life. Guys, I kind of figured out the message. Uh, the dwarf's not going to like this. It says, burn the book the dwarf carries. <laughs> there is a fireplace. It burns a white heat. Uh, it consumes the flames of the fire, and the fire goes out. And as it does so, the back of the fireplace slides down. As you approach the door and open it, you actually find yourselves uh, on the streets of Beacon. Sibo uh, takes off Jesus. his monocle and cleans it briefly, and then uh, puts it puts it <laughs> back on. Hey right. guys, do you do you see any chickens around? Near the center of the square, there's a chicken kind of wandering around. It looks over at you and then uh, turns and starts waddling down a side road. This chicken hops over the frame into this building. So you guys all come into the room and you're standing in a semicircle around this chicken. Sibo, it's me, I- Tom. Okay. Yes. Listen. Yes. When that mind flayer, when he uh, when he got a hold of you and he like used my voice to get you, he had to like tap into our realm and I was able to trace it from that. I got your your buddy here, uh, Roland. We can't get you out directly, but we can make a pathway. You gotta get to the vault. You went there before, right? Go to the vault, look around, you will know where to go. When we last left our heroes, they were having a conversation with a chicken. You have now finished said conversation, or I guess... And the chicken's gone back to being a chicken. Finished. That's right, yeah. It's I, I guess it's less of a conversation and more of just, like, the chicken talking to you. But anyways, uh, so yeah, so the chicken has now talked to you and given you this sort of blueprint for how to get out of here. What are you doing? I completely forgot what the what blueprint was. was. <laughs> we're going... Sebo shout some everybody up. Okay. Bring everybody up back up to pace. Uh, Alright, guys. So, we gotta break into the Vault of Beacon oh. again. So, last time, we had a really nice distraction, right? Uh, Bronhilda was getting married, and... Who? Uh, Bronhilda. Oh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know her. She, she kind of died. She, uh... Yeah. Oh, I, I won't pry any further. She actually decided to play true to her character, and, uh... Bad things happened. Oh, yeah. Yes. Bad Hello, things happened. Hello, darkness, things. my old friend. Anyway. Hey, man. Hey, I mean, I respect Warmier? Respect the effort. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that hit everybody hard yeah. about three or four times. <laughs> three, <laughs> three specifically. Three. <laughs> Anyways, continue with your summarization, Sibo. So, security's more than likely going to be much, much tighter this time. But I still remember Do my we- way in. Do we even know that we're actually in Beacon? This could be another <coughs> fake place. You're very would... correct. We are not in Beacon. Uh, so I think we kind of vaguely... It's established... simple, guys. This is still <laughs> all just an illusion. I would like to interject that Mikhail recognized that it was definitely Beacon as soon as they arrived. But then we also recognize that the people's faces were kind of off yeah, again. Yeah, this, is, this yes. is fake Beacon. So it's fake Beacon, but it is a good representation of so we gotta assume that the vault is it's there in, in fake beacon. So, as long as the people imagining the scenario are aware of it, maybe it's our. our are we filling in the gaps? Mm, mm. No. Are we providing our captors with information about beacon uh. memories? Okay, skipping Fucking along from that, we're gonna hurt my brain. <laughs> Mental fuckery. All right. Before I go further. Um, Wait. Does anybody else have a better idea than breaking into the Vault of Beacon? No, let's do it. No, we Sounds got fun. two out of the f- 
Maybe three out of the five thieves. Let's stop a wedding. I think breaking in somewhere is a good idea. What? I thought we were breaking into a vault. What's this guy do with a wedding? Uh, what? Well, that's just what we did last time we were in town. Keep it good. Stop the room. wedding. Was that the distraction? Uh, well, uh, yeah, it was the distraction. It was Ooh. was Von Hilda's wedding? I'm so is there confused. Any, is there any major events going on right now? I don't know. This is a fake beacon of our imagination. Well, let's let's go to the vault and see what's up with the vault. All right, guys, we got yes. It's in the castle walls. So let's make our way to the castle. Was it in the castle walls? It was not. It was. I'll say. I thought it was. Oh wait, elsewhere. no, no, no. It was like there was like this out in a big square. Yeah, some sort of city square. Yeah. By because there was the whole confrontation with Captain Artemis afterward. Correct. I didn't think it was a square. I thought so, it was like off the no, side. No, it is but... a city square because it's a big building in the middle of a square. There's right. one entrance and one wall. When you enter, it's a gated wall. Once you come in, uh, you got the there's an elevator the elevator right that. in front of you. Yep. Yeah. And, All right, Ash. To your point, it is not the city square. It is a city square. Yeah, so I, it's not like in the center of the city. Well, it isn't kind of near the castle, but it is in a square. I kind of imagined it like off a side street that led to it, and it was like near a wall or something. I don't know. But okay, I got you. I got you. All right, guys. So um, I, I guess let's just make our way to the, the square and see what what we see. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> Might I suggest something? What's up? Should we, um, in the event that we are actually in shall we say, a created situation, we would then be in somebody else's mind. Proposing in that situation, we could create a distraction to draw the dream creator's attention to our position, but have a separate group to go exploring. Wouldn't that create an artificial advantage? Sure. I do, went to the vault last I do time. understand what you're saying. I would say in any heist or diversion is always the best strategy. Whatever will get your opponent's mind off of, you know, their goods is the best. Wait. Uh, by diversion, you mean that I can create as much chaos as I wish amongst these... Ryder, I am suggesting as somebody who wasn't a part of the original diversion, shall we say, you would be most aptly positioned... To definitely be a part of this one. I'll help go into the vault. Mm. I vote to go to the vault, because I do stuff like that. That's my thing. That's what I literally do. I uh, steal shit. I believe I would be most useful going to the vault as well, seeing as I'm the only one that's ever been there before. I can definitely cause trouble. Ramash, would you like to cause some trouble? No, if those two get into trouble, they're going to need someone who's able to heal. Or take a hit, so you two cause trouble. I'll back these two up just in case they get the sort sort of shit. So you and me, Dark Elf. This shall be fun. Darkness. I near I merely need to check in with my companions and make sure that they are sure of their route. But other than that, I believe we can concoct a distraction. Before this though, I still suggest that we put eyes on the vault. See the current status, so then that way we can monitor the process. Assuring that the vault is also something that they wish to keep away from us. All right. If we are truly in a state where they are trying to withhold information from us, it could be someplace out of our notice. All right. I agree with Sibo. Let's go spot out the vault. And then once we're sure of the plan, you two go somewhere else and create a distraction. This sounds like a lot of fun. I still think that maybe two of us, one, I'll, I'll stay here. I'll stay here. If he has, he has to have one eye on me and, t- and an eye on you guys as well. So. Sure. All right. And I guess that's our plan. Wait, is every, yeah. Josh, me, you Josh, are you coming as well? Into the vault, yeah. No, 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 we're, we're just going to go like check out the spot right now. We're not, oh, we're not at, doing the heist Like the yet. outside of it? Yes, we're just putting eyes on. <laughs> yeah. If he's so, going to heist, you better be prepared. All right. Yep. Uh, so as I think as like we're all leaving, like walking out the door, Sebo kind of turns back and yells at Ryder. <laughs> Ryder, um, just try not to get into uh, too much trouble yet. All right. Can I do? A, can I roll up for a deception check? <laughs> uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll a deception check. Scout's honor. <laughs> 
That is a uh, that's a twenty one. Oh God! He puts his hand behind his back and uh, crosses his fingers. Twisties crossies doesn't count. I promise. I promise. All right now. And gives him a bow as he's now. Just because I'd like to conceivo rolls to see if he can see through the deceit. Do you have a reasonable? I mean, reason to believe that he is deceiving you when he says he's not going to do anything. I mean, I just killed, almost killed Joshimi, so... You see what I want to trust him to the sense Okay, of, I mean, I guess you can roll, yeah, sure. I mean, he, he, he doesn't normally even trust with, like, the criminal, you know, some of the criminals he works with. What would that be plus? Insight? Uh, sure, do insight. Six. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, Six. you don't see it. Okie dokie. Onward we go. Okay, so uh, everybody, if I was a... Uh, Ryder, are you saying you were staying there? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So Ryder, stay, Ryder is uh, staying there. He kind of posts up by the door. Uh, everybody else files out, except for Josh and me, who walks over and sits down at one of the tables and pulls out a book and begins to write. Pretty, mu- pretty much nonstop for about a minute. Or so, picking his words and writing, uh, writing into the book here. Can I, can I, like, can I see him? Yeah, I mean, you have eyes, don't you? <laughs> like, like, he... Yeah, he's in the same room as you. Hey, buddy, what are you writing? None of your goddamn business, that's what. What did you say to me? Sorry, sir. Josh me. What did you write into the book? Him, Josh me. I wrote, is... I, I titled it. This is today. This is today. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Today Show. My uh, name is Josh. Wait, wait. With Josh and me, Rockhammer. <laughs> he he titled it. Uh, this is the story of my life. My name is Josh and me, Rockhammer, the greatest thief of all time. And then he wrote <laughs> at the beginning. He's he wrote. I'll write the rest of this down. I'll write the stuff that happened before down later. And then he skipped a little bit of space and then started writing. Those three chuckle fucks left and proceeded to the vault to, uh, well, what were they doing? To scout it out. And everything goes as planned. There is very little to no guards as they appear to be busy elsewhere at a ceremony. Josh and me soon, soon follows behind them. Didn't we throw Josh and me's book in the fire? We did. It's not writing. It's All right. He's writing this. <clears throat> Josh and me, that's... Excuse me, everyone. We're going to leave you uh, in media res, as it were, <laughs> and rewind a little bit. We're going to rewind back to the moment that the book was burned. So as you all were busy throwing the book into the fire and uh, roasting it, whatever... Joshimi felt a small sort of a kind of a tug or a thump in his rucksack, which, uh, being someone who's paranoid of people stealing from him, immediately caught his attention. So he opened up his rucksack and dug through it and realized an additional book had been added to his bag. As he investigated the book earlier, the book says on the cover... A story of what is to come. And then underneath that, the subheading is 100% foolproof with an asterisk at the end. (laughs) God damn it. Fuck me. And so now we rewind to the present. Wouldn't we fast forward? Great. Yes. Yes. We're all down the lower. <laughs> we're, 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 we see that. We're rewinding to where we were before, which is in the future, which is a fast forward. <laughs> Mind freak. Or I'm, hey, writer. Good luck living. <laughs> all right. He didn't write anything down about me. So here we are <laughs> with Sibo, uh, Mikael, and Ramash, who have just crept to the edge of... Uh, of the square where the vault is, and uh, there appears to be almost no guards in this square. Oh, this is weird. You, I thought you said there would have been more guards. Well, I mean, last time there were like uh, there were still two on the door. Well, maybe maybe it's because this is more like a memory 
as opposed to like actual events, you know? But in in memory, there would still be gods, and or in <coughs> at least as many as we had before. I would assume. Were there guards outside the place last time? Yes. I thought they were inside. Can see there was a patrol. I thought there, were, there was a couple oh, outside. There was a patrol, yeah. that's right. Yes, there was a patrol protection. that circled the whole kind of vault, and then there was a couple guys outside, and there was towers. Right. No, that towers. That that's was, the that heist. Was the other. That was yeah. That was the right. Bank. That was in reach. Yeah. yeah, that was in reach. It's gonna be nineteen. Okay, what are you trying to like Beacon, look at here? Uh, a couple of guys outside, and then a locked door inside. Right. I think it was just a one room building. That was that was Reach. Reach was the locked door inside. We had to try to like. God, yeah, this sneak is just a way. My apologies. It's kind of more like a store storage ro- uh, building than anything. Uh, the 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 vault in Reach was you had to go through the main door, and then there was kind of like a a chamber on the top floor, and you had to talk to some guards in there. And then you went down the uh, the elevator into the vault itself. I remember. Anyways, Sibo. Uh, what are you trying to perceive with your role here? The environment, the surroundings. I mean, kind of like from a thief's point uh, point of view. Like, I don't know. Is there literally nothing in, in nobody in this square? Are there? Is it populated? Is the gate closed or open? Okay. As far as the the building and all of that is concerned, everything looks exactly as you remember it. Uh, The building has not changed whatsoever, and there is one guard standing in front of the door, um, and he seems kind of distracted, not particularly attentive. Okay. Um, All right, guys. Well, I mean, this looks like a cakewalk. One guard easily taken out, then I can slip through the gate, unlock it from the inside. Um, Uh, All right. Uh, Get it down. Okay. Mikhail, I think uh, all you gotta do is go back to Ryder and create a distraction, and we're good to go. Wait, where's Josh and me? Where is Josh and me? What the fuck? <sighs> do we need Josh and me? No, we don't need Josh and me. We can share the details anyway. with him, and he'll be useful either way. All just, right, yeah, you, just you run back to Ryder. And, indeed. And we'll get inside the vault. Stop the chaos. Fair enough. Right up my head. I'm trying to make a noise. Can do. All right. So Sibo and Ramash are gonna post up uh, in the like one of those you know how we were in the alleys before, kind of off secting this square. Right. We kind of just post up in one of those alleys, um, looking at the gate. Okay. And we wait for the chaos to ensue. Agreed. So Mikael, you're heading back to the uh, to the room now. <laughs> yeah. Where. Um, okay party was, other yeah, than yeah. the people exploring forward. Josh, me, have you written anything else in the book? Um, yeah, so Josh, me, was planning on going and helping with the scouting after he was done writing that. So he gets up, and he goes out the door basically after he was done writing all that. He closed the book and left. So this wasn't, this is probably what they're still out there looking around, I'm imagining. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as he gets out the door, he stops for a moment and thinks, and then opens the book back up and adds a little addendum. Ryder takes a nap until Mikhail comes back to begin the distraction. Okay. And then he shuts the book and goes and meets up with them while they're doing the reconnaissance. Uh, Ryder, you, uh, for even though you were fully conscious moments before, you suddenly feel a sleepiness come over you and you decide that, uh, Hey, you're not doing much. You might as well just you know lay down and take a nap. I'm not okay with this, but all right. <laughs> what the fuck? So Ryder lays down and takes a nap. I don't like this. This is not okay. <laughs> this is not okay. Shh. I'm gonna have to kill Josh. Me. <laughs> No, I'm gonna have to kill Josh and me. Wait, wait, okay, so Josh, me, are you are you going to join the rest so of the companions, or where are you going? Yeah. He, he's going to catch up to help with the reconnaissance if that's what they were still doing okay. when he shows up. So I think on your way there, you probably run into Mikhail, who's on his way back to the room. Hey, what's up there, tall, dark, and lonely? <sighs> well, I just headed back. Oh, okay. You have found the diversion stuff, okay? Reconnaissance so well? We all good? Yeah, yeah, totally. Sweet. Have fun. 
Sure enough. <laughs> okay, see you. Oh, and as Josh is leaving, or as they pass, Josh me like turns back around. Oh, by the way, I think I saw Ryder laying down. He might. I think he might have been a little tired or something. So you might have to wake him up before you do your diversion. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, diversion, whatnot, distraction, alarm bell, whatever you call it. Can do. <laughs> oh my god. I don't, I'm scared about me, Kyle, right now. This is very weird. That's what's weird? Yes. Yes. Yeah, There's a guy who's got the magic book of telling whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, but that's not mm-hmm. freaking me out. You could literally tell me to kill myself. <laughs> okay, so Mikael, you've reached the room and you find Ryder uh, stone cold asleep on the floor. <clears throat> Cast dancing lights just inside his eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! What, is, what does this dancing lights look like? Party uh, in the house. Tonight. Well, first it seems like a couple of fairies, but then it immediately progresses into a couple of loud elephants who then submerge, well, combine into a larger elephant, and then just loud trumpeting noises trying to wake him. So it's big right. elephants on parade. That's literally what I'm thinking of. Yeah, R- Ryder. Oh God. You just had a <laughs> magic-induced acid trip for about 20 <laughs> seconds, and now you're awake. <laughs> I'm blind! <laughs> What's real? What's not? He doesn't know anymore. <laughs> Is this the real life? Oh, well, I just... Okay, so, what, so what's Ryder doing here? <laughs> he just kind of sits up. Not the weirdest trip I've ever had. Um, we have a problem. Yes, and that being... Josh and me has another magic book. Uh, how did you come by this information? I never fall asleep before a performance. Fair. So are you saying we need to stop them, or it could work to their advantage? I have no idea. Then let's stick to the plan. Alright, um... So here's what I'm thinking. We put on a little performance. Something big. Bold. Flashy, elegant, lots of blood. I like you. <laughs> I like you very much. Do you play any instruments? Do instruments of torture count? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was about to ask, does the rapier count in its precise movements and the wonderful twang of steel as it courses through flesh? No? I... I might need to clean up after myself after that. Um, no, not technically, but um, did you I think shit that will. Yourself or did you come? Why not both? <laughs> um, are you scared? Shopping, not did typical. you? Are Are you gonna cry? Maybe piss your pants? Maybe oh shit and come? <laughs> they call that a blumpkin. <laughs> I shummed myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shummed myself. <laughs> I shummed right in my pants every time you're next to me. <laughs> okay. So many terms today, and it's just <laughs> dictionary. Getting weirder. Can't stop us. Get. It's more of an <laughs> urban dictionary. <laughs> All right, you two chuckle fox. What do you? What's going on here? Ryder takes out his uh, guitar, and he strums a couple chords and sings from the heart. Are you doing this? Inside the room, or are so, you going outside? We're, we're kicking down the door and walking out. Okay. Are we doing a coordinated Music blade video. dance? Because that Fuck could be yeah. distracting and cool. I bing, have, bing, 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 bing. I have the um because oh, I'm a glamour dance. bard. I have something called enthralling performance, which draws people towards me to see the show. Which oh, means that you'll have to create a bloodbath. So is there a rule involved with that enticing performance? And drawing performance? And yeah, drawing. <laughs> yeah, you uh you murder everybody who comes close to watch me. Alright. Is that the plan? That is the plan. Mikael and Ryder, I'd like both of you to roll a performance check. This ought to be good. Mm. Huh? Nat twenty. Unnatural Plus. twenty. Damn. Woo! This is gonna be one hell of a show, boys. 
You better be thinking about, about a soundtrack for this mm-hmm. right now. Big City Slam. Literally, boys. I have the that song from the end of the Goofy movie in my head right now. See, I'm picturing more. Um, when I'm picturing more uh, each other's eyes. The, yeah, that the one. dance <laughs> in Road to El Dorado. Oh. Ooh. Where the one guy's playing the guitar and the other guy's dancing around. Yeah. My Except mind. this time, the guy dancing around has a sword and he's murdering everyone. Ryder begins to play a bewitching blend of lyrical notes. And, uh. Can I also use prestidigitation to create different instruments and drum beats in the song, too? Do you want me to roll for that? Do I need to roll for that? Do you need to roll for prestidigitation? I thought you could just do that. I thought Fine. Okay, you should be able to do I think do you that. can just do prestidigitation. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, re- I'll revise that then. <clears throat> Ryder begins a Slipknot concert. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing psychosocial in a city square right now. <laughs> it's very disturbing. And uh, as he begins to draw in all of these, uh, all of these townsfolk, Mikhail goes to work dancing with his saber and uh, slicing the slicing and dicing. And a curious thing happens. Poetically. Every time that he connects with somebody, instead of blood, a fine black mist emits from the cut and they drop to the ground, lifeless. Ryder, our audience appears ethereal, shall we say. Keep slicing. Indeed. Psycho social. Psycho social. Keep on slicing. Keep on slicing. <laughs> now we jump back over to the uh, the heist group, um, and uh, Joshmi is just walking up to join uh, Ramash and uh, Sivo. Hey, what the fuck's going on, guys? We're getting ready to break in. Cool. Where, where the fuck have you been? Oh, I, I had to take a whiz. Yeah, sure. What? You? We've been in hell for how long? Bodily functions are still a thing. Just because we don't know what time it is, doesn't mean our bodies don't know what time it is. My body pretty much knows what time it is. All right, Joshua. Whatever, whatever. Just Let's be just be quiet, all right, please? Thank you. That's it. Yeah, hey, that's what you do. Does anyone know if the distraction's yeah, happening? You gotta listen for the distraction. Psycho-social. Can I do a perception check to see if I hear anything then. in the distance? Yes, do a perception check, please. I beg you. <laughs> You don't catch any of the good parts. All you hear is, <laughs> and the rain will kill us all. <laughs> Throw ourselves hey, against guys, the listen, wall. Guys, listen, listen. I, I, I think I hear. I think I hear copyright infringement. <laughs> thirty. I only did. Oh my god! Listen. Wait. wait, wait you um- wait. You rolled a thirty. Okay. Sibo hears. <gasps> Psychosocial. 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 All right, that's all we can. Oops, Point further. That's all copyright we can say. Then, then copyright infringement will come in. You can do like copyright infringement drops no matter how long you go. Act no you five seconds. Well, okay, you can do a couple seconds, but also this might fall under parody law. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Fair use. <laughs> fair use under parody law. <laughs> You're Anyways, to sing the song. So what, you, you sh- what we should have done is called that's the true. social psycho. Okay, okay, we're, okay. we're not actually playing the song. We're just singing it, so I think we're fine. Anyways, Great so that's random. that's what you guys hear. Uh, Ramash hears the okay part. Sibo hears the, the real good <laughs> part oh, of the Josh song. Josh has got a Woo! Nothing. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, what is this? Perception? Yeah. yeah. That's an eight. <laughs> he just hears a little doop. Josh and me just hears, and the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, boys. Let's do this. Josh and me hears a five seconds of summer song for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm assuming the guard is still there, right? Uh, yes, there is still the one guard. However, again, that you see nothing else going All on right, right now. Sibo would like to look at this guard and look at the space directly behind him and teleport behind him and take him out. You gonna kill him or are you gonna knock him out? All right, Revenant. Yes. We don't know that they're like. Okay, so you pop up behind him. Uh, 
Go ahead and do a surprise attack, my dude. Surprise attack? Advantage. You get an advantage roll on your attack, and you can roll all of your different attacks you have. So that's gonna be a fifteen. Yeah, his him. Okay. Sneak so attack just adds extra damage. Too. I think he just means add your sneak attack damage. Seven damage. Uh, so yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, roll again. That's going to be another four damage. Eleven. Yeah, you pop up behind this dude. You put one dagger directly into his back and draw the other dagger across his throat. And he drops to the ground with this, like, dark mist oozing out of him. <laughs> what the fuck? They're not real. We can kill anyone. Um, did you not know that they weren't real? And then Sibo is going to slip through the gate. Ramash is going Actually, to the he's door. gonna stay. He's not gonna talk to Ramash because after he assassinates this guy, he's gonna slip through in shadow form, and then he's going to unshadow and open the gate. So you just went to the other side of the gate and opened it in shadow form. Yep. Okay. So Sibo quickly shadows through the uh, the keyhole <laughs> of the door, pops through on the other side and pops it open as it swings open. He turns, uh, Ramash, are you following him? Oh, yeah, then? for sure. Okay. Ramash is just coming up the stairs of the building. Sibo has opened the door, and he turns and looks, and inside of this room is 50 armed guards. Woo! Let's get jiggy with it. Dun, 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 and they all, lo- they all look at you, and they begin to charge. <laughs> oh, yeah! Finally! Hey everybody, RJ here. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Realms and Nerds. If you are, and you haven't already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications for the show to know when new episodes are released. Also, maybe share the show with someone else that you think would enjoy it. It's one of, if not the best, ways to help our podcast continue to grow. It's available on pretty much every platform out there, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Amazon Music, Pandora, iHeartRadio. Thank you so much to our friend Kyle for composing the melody of our main theme. And of course, thank you to every single one of you for listening to our podcast. in the distance, Joshmi is hearing the clatter of armor moving in there, hastily grabs the book open, and writes down, one one of the guards charging trips, and they all fall over like dominoes. Okay. Uh, One of the guards in the front of this charging horde trips, and, um... They they all kind of tumble over the top of him. However, this tumbling mass is still big enough that they uh, completely flip over and they engulf Sibo, well, who is say, can, can contained can inside of them. A, a um, acrobatic check to try and jump on the bodies, kind of you know, all Surf like Yoda over style. Okay, go go ahead and roll out. acrobatics. Even when you have complete control, you done fucked up. <laughs> Maybe and that's going to be twenty two. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sibo is able to, uh, keep himself from being piled completely underneath by jumping from body to body. However, uh, as you sort of, uh, make it to the end of all of this, you still find yourself, uh, sort of on top of a pile of 50 people that all want to murder you. Alright, well, so as he's getting kind of, uh, fall, as he's falling down. Oh, I'm coming, Sibo! Oh, shit, I gotta figure out. Don't have a bear I'm form. A, just like I, bear oh form hell yeah! I'm, ju- I'm glad you said that. I'm gonna. <laughs> Rosh is gonna turn into a fucking bear and go roaring into this giant ass pile of soldiers who are all gonna die. I love this a horrifying death. Of <laughs> Thanks, monstrosity. I love it. <laughs> 
Okay, so you turn to bear form. Bear mosh is going in. Uh, doesn't that require a spell to use that? No. No, that's no, just his bonus. natural wild shape. You can just do that? Yeah. Okay. As a druid, he just naturally just can turn into whatever animal star. we've seen before. He forgot them all. Yeah, that's the thing. I forgot all the animals, but we uh, established that Ramash relearned how to turn into a bear. Right. Right. I, no, I knew that. I just, um, I thought that actually required you to use a, a spell for no. that. But, okay. You're good. Woo! Woo! <laughs> So you're char- you're charging in on him. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and roll a uh, roll an attack roll. I don't remember what the fuck attacks he has. You gotta pull up the bear. You gotta pull up the bear. Encounters plus. Encounters plus. I fail in the pit. You fail in the pit. We, we all, all fail in the pit. All right. Pit. I make two attacks. One bite. One with claws. The bite. Um. That's a 24 to hit, the nearest soldier. Right. Okay. And Claws is an 18 to the nearest soldier. Okay. Yeah, you, uh, you're you going to connect. Do for I sure. even need to really roll damage? Because when he cut them with the rapier, they just kind of poofed. Oh, uh, no, you don't need to roll damage. Uh, you connect with, uh, with two of them, and they both uh, disintegrate. However, there is still a large chunk of them, which you have now charged into the middle of. And uh, they're uh, they're going to make an attack on you. How the fuck is this going to work? Well, I assume only the nearest ones can attack me. Because they are kind of piled in this giant ass ball of death and glory. Well, but he piled into them. They could just swing right. a sword at him. Uh, 15 versus AC. Yeah, that'll hit. There for him? He doesn't have a high AC. He just has a decent amount of hit points. Uh, you get slashed for three points of damage as you smash into this horde. Uh, Joshmi, are you doing anything to help this situation? So Joshmi thinks for another second, then writes up, The bear boy kicks up a bunch of dust and blinds all the soldiers. All right. Ramash, do it. Let's do a dexterity check. Oh, God. Holy fuck. I'm rolling great tonight. That's a 21. Okay. You, uh, Ramash, like, almost turns his hind legs towards the soldiers and starts uh, clawing at the ground. And even though it's stone, he kind of is able to scratch some dirt out of the, the... sort of the lines in the cobblestone and uh, creates a little bit of dust cloud that blinds these soldiers. Sibo, make a constitution saving throw for me. That's a critical fail. Sibo, <laughs> uh, you are also <laughs> blinded by this dust cloud. Okay. Pocket sand. That's why I was the sand of the pocket. Sand, sand of the pocket. <laughs> Is Sibo up? Yeah, go for us. Uh, so as Sibo gets blinded, he's just gonna let out, like, a scream, and <laughs> as he does, um, a fearsome presence of the Fae appears around him and begins to frighten the people around him. Does that include the wash? I make a, a good throw and they don't <laughs> succeed. <laughs> oh, wait, do they have to succeed against my wisdom safety? I make noise! So you have to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, 13. That does not pass. So, these guards in a 10-foot cube around me, which I assume is probably all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, are charmed or frightened by you. Uh, he's going to do frightened until the end of my next turn. Uh, so as they get frightened, they all have to scramble away from me. <laughs> okay. Kill each other. Ooh. You didn't think about That's that. That's an even better idea. He was going to charm them all. <laughs> Can you do takes you back? Is that here? a separate roll? Or are they just automatically charmed? No, it's, charm? it's, it's charmed or frightened, my choice. I'm going to say that you're going to have to stick with your original choice here. Oh, oh. it would have been so much fun. Yeah, I know, but I like uh, I like making people stick with their original choices. Um, Sometimes. So Sibo frightens mm-hmm. all of the guards and they have to scramble away from him. Where the hell are they going, I wonder? Okay. Out the door, probably. So you frighten <laughs> these guards, and they uh, 
they freak out and they start scrambling and they scramble out the door directly towards Joshmi. Bye. They all fall dead. Joshmi quickly <laughs> scratches in. In their blindness and apparent fright, they keep scrambling into each other and accidentally stabbing their swords into each <laughs> other, killing each other. What is this god magic? Joshmi gets out of the way with due haste. And then he like slams the book shut, shoves it in his pack, and moves. <laughs> Running and writing. <laughs> what is this god power you found? Is okay. this book It's making up for the fact spell? I'm only level five. Joshmi, you uh you quickly write this and then scramble out of the way as this uh mass sort of infights between themselves and uh they do in fact kill kill each other. Oof, and that was gruesome. But kinda cool. Could he make us kill ourselves? Is this, like, Final Destination? <laughs> um, as Sibo, like, gets up and brushes the dust off of him and uh, cleans his eyes out, uh, he he's kind of, like, almost, like, shocked at his own, like, power. Like, he didn't know he even could do this. <laughs> um, and so he is kind of just standing there, like, in bewilderment at what just well, happened. Well, is confused as to why these morons killed themselves. But it's not going to question They're it because it was rather convenient. Ryder is still playing psychosocial. <laughs> and um, and after after like a, a momentary pause, Sibo kind of shakes back to reality and runs for the elevator. Oh, Ramash joins him. Or Bear Ramash okay. joins him. And Sibo is not waiting for Ramash and or for um, uh, Joshimi unless Joshimi is. Joshua is like on his way to there. Okay, when so he like hasted so out of the way, unless he, he, went see, unless there. he sees him. Yeah, you, like, you see right, him, like, like, huffing and puffing. Well, he's he's actually a little bit more fit, but he's still huffing and puffing. Come on, Josh me. I can only run so fast. Ryder and Mikhail, you've been playing this song for uh, several minutes now. Yeah, we got a great following. And, uh, Mikhail, you actually don't have a great following because you have killed a lot of them. They go. They They've run. been just peacefully watching. That's pretty great to me. Yeah, peacefully watching from a dead state on the ground is not peaceful. <laughs> so they haven't been dissipating as they die. I mean, no. I mean, the bodies are still on the ground. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the Let the bodies hit the <laughs> All right, so what? Mustachios. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. So Ryder has now switched into a, uh, a different song. Doing some drowning pool now. <laughs> Walking for and take much more. Here we go now. Drop the room with me. All right. So you guys have been doing this performance for several minutes. Um, Josh, I mean, did you write anything else in the book about them other than the basically what the you wrote? Metal two band. Metal arrangement. I mean, basically, like, had. kind of the same shtick of they're successful in their endeavors. Right, but you didn't write anything additional to what you wrote before. Mm, no, not really. I mean, he does, he's not really the kind of guy to think big picture. Like, well, maybe. I don't know. This is a heist, and that's when he's, like, most keen with his senses. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, no, he did. He did write something. He wrote, a, uh, and whatever writer tells me, Kyle, about this magical book. Being magical, Mikhail will not believe him. Okay. So, Ryder, you have <coughs> been performing several cover songs from hit metal bands of the early odds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which which we all love, and we're not trying to copyright and fringe. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got a stain. There you go, now you got your disclaimer. <laughs> oh, you go. gosh. Also uh, what are you doing now, Ryder? <laughs> I mean, are people still coming? Uh, at this point... <laughs> <laughs> They've been coming a long time, buddy. <laughs> it's early odds of metal. At, the, at this point, uh, there's still some people showing up, but, like... So you know how, like, at a metal concert, <laughs> when a circle gets created, like, you get the... like a mosh pit? You get the... Yes. You get the like uh, serious fans. You get the, the death circle in the middle, but then awkward. like everybody else stays to the outside of that. 
Yeah. So Mikael made a death circle, but like with actual, <laughs> actual death. Actual death. <laughs> so there are some people outside of the death circle, but close to you, there's nothing because there there was actual death. So rolling with the fact that it's more or less a death metal circle pit. All in. Are there uh, are there like guys jumping into this that are definitely all about the death or is it just me Kyle just kind of Glad or G. <laughs> well I mean if there are they're probably dead I, would, like just, I would counter that that is up to you being me Kyle if dudes jumped in and tried to have some fun in the pit are you killing them as well or are you letting them you know li- live in their you peace know what? rock on dude he's, he's definitely <laughs> allowing for the blood Okay, so like, so we'll say that uh, there was a couple other dudes that jumped in, like, maybe not like full rapiers, but like some dudes with daggers that jumped in for whatever reason, and they're kind of like... Adding to the chaos. Yeah, you know, there's like the dudes in the mosh pits that are doing the most and like have the whole like arms extended spinning kind of thing. Yeah. You got a couple dudes doing that, but like they're holding daggers. (laughs) Not quite as impressive. I've definitely incited a mob. <laughs> you're, you're the All fucking right. Joker. All right, Joker. you ready? All right, Limp Biscuit, calm down. <laughs> you ready for the fun part, Mikael? God, what? You've been you ready for it. I'm gonna use Eldritch Blast on one of the buildings. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? <laughs> Nothing's with you? more metal. Okay, than the- come on. <laughs> Let the buildings hit the floor. <laughs> Let the buildings hit the floor. Oh wait, I don't need to roll for it, or do I need to roll an attack roll? <laughs> building. Uh, this good, is just the building hits a character. Go ahead and roll an attack, just just for the sake of like how effective the attack is going to be. That's a fifteen. Okay. Uh, what is your what's your intention with hitting the building? To break a part off of it. Okay. Uh, with a 15, I think that you you catch the building and uh, about the top third of it crumbles down off the top of it. Now this is a party. A real party would have a flaming unicorn running through all the buildings in town. <laughs> okay, so you've uh, you've been performing this concert for a while. You guys just gonna like keep going with this, or like what's what's your long long, long game here? Coming. As long as people are uh, coming all over the stage, let the bloodbath continue. Can nobody is coming on the stage? Just okay, but like, so you're just staying there playing the guitar. I like. I'm gonna start knocking down some buildings and actually causing some real trouble. Okay, mayhem. so you guys continue to cause mayhem in this square with no intention of leaving. We jump back to our heist crew. Okay, so as, like, the elevator gets to the bottom of the shaft. <sighs> um, Balls deep. Sibo, well, I guess I, I should ask first, when they get to the bottom, does Sibo feel anything or sense anything? At the bottom of the shaft? <laughs> you probably feel the balls, honestly. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I didn't want to go there. So, um... Uh, no, I mean, like, okay. To answer your question, when you get to the bottom of the elevator, um, it just seems, uh, as normal, I guess. Like, you've tech... I mean, you've been here before, and you don't yes. really seem... doesn't seem like anything is different. Okay, well, I guess he was going to walk off the elevator Watch and... Your and just start walking aimlessly because he was told that he'd know yep. what he's looking for. So he kind of just starts walking. I guess I'll roll a perception check. Okay. Uh, for 23. He found the balls. Okay. Looking for anything that's off or anything that calls him over, like, draws his attention. Josh, I mean, you went down with him, correct? Yeah, and as far as I know, I'm still okay. in the. Elevator. Did you uh, Did you write anything in the book when yeah, you went like, down to the bottom? I, w- I was waiting when they both left, and we're starting to just kind of look, wander around, and look. Josh, me, takes a, sneaks the book out and like opens it up and writes, "They find what they've been looking for." 
Can I do like? Or a, they they? What was it? Can was, I do uh, a perception check as a bear? I have advantage on hearing perception checks. So can I hear him? Why the fuck are you still a bear? You couldn't fit in a goddamn <laughs> elevator. That's yeah, what you think. Elevator. Oh, that's true. It's, a lot of it's, it's, Maybe it's he stood on two fucking before. legs, bitch. Anyway, bear, as a bear, I have advantage on um, hearing. Wait, percent. were you standing on two legs in the elevator? Maybe he was sitting. Intimidation. Maybe I just sat down. Okay, but I need an answer. Fine, were no, you? he just sat. He just sat down. Okay. He sat his happy ass down. Because if you were, I was going to make you roll a uh, performance check to stand on two legs. Oh, I'm legs. glad you did. I'm glad I said what I said now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, can I see if I can hear him writing in that book? Okay, go ahead and roll. That's a 12. Uh, oh, wait, that's an advantage, didn't I? Yes, he did. That's better. That's a nineteen. Uh, yeah. I mean, you do hear like a like a scraping of a, a pen over paper. Rosh is gonna look back at where Josh me is and assume I see him writing in a book. You do, yes. Wait, hold on. Can I? When he's turning back around, like you're focused on writing there, bud. Am I? Was you I can, in the middle you of can writing? Me for you made. Well, he heard you while you were writing. You made him well, sleep. You can okay. make him go. Let's say this. Uh, let's do a perception check from Josh and me. Okay. Oh, what was the perception? Yeah. That's another eight. Okay. Uh, you don't really notice him seeing you. Okay. But, okay, so, uh... uh Josh and me was writing, uh, they find what they were sent here to find. Ramash is not going to do anything, but he's going to make a mental note to come back to that later. Okay. Because this is we're currently in the middle of the heist and he doesn't want to make things dramatic or anything. And he also doesn't want Josh to know he saw him. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, we go back to so you wrote that we see what or we find what we're looking for, where the fuck it is. We, see what we find around. what we were sent here to find. We find what we were sent here to find. Find. Yeah. Alright. The bifocals of Latutu. <laughs> the binoculars right. of Latutu. Alright, Sibo. You have been uh, investigating down here for a couple minutes, and uh, after turning around several different piles of treasure, you uh, find a, uh, a a doorway that is kind of sort of built into the side of one of the piles of treasure. Sibo kind of stops and looks at this door curiously, tilts his head a little bit, and walks towards the door, and then puts his hand on the knob and opens it up. Okay. Uh, you open the doorway. Are you stepping through or are you just opening it? Just opening it. Okay, you open the door, and um, you just see, like, uh, blackness on the other side. You can't see through the doorway. Um, guys. Guys. Hey, over here! <laughs> oh, I didn't realize you were still there. Um, it, no, no faith, bro, I love... Uh, you don't remember it, but I've ridden you multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that joke an 8 out of 10. What the fuck? What? Oh, um, it's uh, at it's at the time that he says you don't remember this, but I've ridden you a couple of times. The Josh and me rounds the corner. <laughs> Excuse me, say what the fuck? Josh and me, I found the, I think I found the way out. Yeah, but can we rewind for a second? You said you rode them a few times. Hey, you've never ridden a bed before. And no, I can't say that's really in my mo. He ain't big enough. Uh, okay, whatever, I mean, you don't even need a saddle or anything, man, you just jump on the feet. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there, why'd you call us over? I found the way out, I think. <laughs> You're a fucking pervert. Every, which one? He just, like, shouts at you. You don't need either. a saddle? Just need a noob! <laughs> So, quick Please. question about the the oh, door that you God. said. Is this like like late nineties, early aughts, pretty bad VFX looking kind of door in a pile of gold? Like somebody just clearly, if this were a movie, somebody just clearly like kind of made a CGI model and kind of stuck it <laughs> in front of there, and you can clearly tell that's not supposed to usually be there, kind of deal. Pretty sure they were built into. But the obviously, trailer. this is in this fiction, like a real door in the place. Like it's just, I guess my point is, is it clear it's. Not supposed to be there, typically. Do we have to wait for a thrush or not? 
This ain't the Hobbit there, bud. Yes, this is a door that is in, just like, in a pile of gold. Okay. Like. <laughs> just a random door that no one wants. You threw it in a pile of gold. Like, like the so door is just there. And I will say this. Joshimi is very convinced this is the way out. All right. That looks exactly like what we're here for, because that does not make sense being here, which is exactly what they said. They said we'd know what it is when we found it. <sighs> Boom, bing, bang, bong. You're Boom. right. Now we just need the other two members <clears throat> of our troop so that we can leave. <clears throat> That's true. Well, <clears throat> hopefully they realize that it was just supposed to be a temporary thing and to meet us here. Was that clear? I don't remember. Ramash gently nudges Joshimi back the way they came with his, like, head. Hopefully, clearly trying to get him to go back to go get them. Fine, fine, I'll go get them. So Joshimi goes, and as soon as he's out of sight, pulls out the book again and writes, The other two members decide that now is the time to meet up with the rest of us and arrive with no trouble. Fucking wish Well, spell. fucking tell them to teleport there! Well, what do you, well, what do you think? Mikhail's going around the town square close to front doors going, I chime in, haven't you ever heard of closing the goddamn door? Hey, um, do you Whatever. think that it might be time for us to uh, exit Depart? stage left? And we were some dark elf and a weird-ass tiefling. Good night, everyone. Hey, magic book wielder, why don't you just create a portal that leads to the normal So are you, world? are you exiting the stage right, so to speak? Yep. Okay, so you uh, exit, you run out of the square and um, leave a pretty significant pile, pile of bodies in your wake. Not to mention some broken buildings. The place is trashed. They've okay. Got to let uh, which way are you heading, my musician slash saber performing friends? I am following, um... Mikael? Mikael. Because say, he probably knows where the fuck we're going. Okay. As, as it said in the book, they, they arrive with no trouble. Mikael, where are you go? Straight for the vault. They're willingly following the, okay. the book. Okay. Uh, like you, it. uh, you follow along going towards the path that you remember for the vault being a little ways. And then, Mikael, roll a perception check for me. That's a 12. Okay. You begin to sense that something is not right about your path, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Hmm, good gravy. Everyone seems to be wearing different outfits. Different outfits? What, 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 do, you, what do you mean? Well, they don't seem to be celebrating the same festival that we were the last time we were in town. Oh, all oh, right, that, that wedding. Um, you remember that this is like some kind of stock sort of thing? So, right, that would mean that it's not taking place at the time that we invaded the town. So, why don't we just, does this mean anything? Can we just keep, can we just keep going to wherever we're going? Or is this some kind of big thing that we should be worried about? Well, I'm not one to stir a fuss, but I do fear that it may spell different consequences to our friends who are attempting to venture into the vault. You're very good at roundabout ways of saying what you want to say. That's Mikhail's specialty. <laughs> well, addressing things directly is... Should I roll a perception check to see what the fuck's going on? You may certainly roll a perception check. That's a 13. You you also notice that the people that you begin to see are dressed somewhat differently than the the townsfolk that you saw a little while ago. Before. Do I like what's different about them? <laughs> you rolled a 13, my dude. <laughs> So they look like basic sims or are we talking about like fanciful dress? I guess we just. I'm, I'm not going to I, I'm okay. Yeah, I mean, they they still look like um, they still look like townsfolk. They just are dressed differently. the The outfits seem to be um, a little bit heavier. There's more fur involved. Did we just sneak into another? Oh no! Oh no! We need to go back. We need to go back. What are you suggesting? 
Remember the first time that we went to, or that we got caught in this place? A different alternate reality, yes. We're walking into another area. Yes, it appears that at this point, everything that we venture into is a different or alternate reality. What are you suggesting this one is? Some kind of winter or some kind of arctic environment? Look at all these people. It's all it's fur and it's heavier clothing. We're we're not we're not walking into another part of Beacon. We're walking someplace closer to the Arctic. Do you suggest that is further or closer to our objective? Further. Then let us find this point and venture towards it. No further delay should be held. Should I roll a perception check to see if I can see like the cracks in this or in this sort of thing like I did the last time? Uh, yeah, sure. Go, go ahead and roll a perception check. You broke reality again, a second time, another one. Are you fucking? That's a thirteen again. Okay. Uh, you don't see any cracks. However, as you turn around to uh, venture back down the road that you were just following, you have an unexpected surprise. There, uh, There's a building behind you. Who, who put one? this building here? Mikhail. Is it familiar or totally strange? Uh, do an Perception. investigation check for me. Investigation? Yeah, not not you, Ryder. Okay. Miko. It's a five. Yeah, it's a building. You don't know. <laughs> Can I roll an investigation check then? <laughs> sure, go ahead and do an investigation check. Okay, that is a... Um, that's a 17. I guess I have to ask you this then. How well traveled is Ryder? I've been to hell and back. Okay, b- beside, okay, we'll say the uh, the overworld. The material plane. I mean, how far is the Blackwater's reach in this world? They're all over the place, aren't they? The Blackwater's are, that doesn't mean you have been. Well, that means, if the Blackwater's are, that means that I've been to everywhere in between doing jobs for them. Okay, I'm just, I don't know how, I mean, we never established, like, how long you've worked for them, where you've gone for them, etc., etc., so I'm just, I'm leaving that up to you. I can effectively say that Ryder's probably been quite a few places. I mean, he's he's an internationally known musician who's well traveled, probably. Okay, cool. Uh, you look at this building, and uh, you you study and examine it for a, a good probably ten seconds or so, and then it kind of hits you. This building is close to a building you know very well. And as you look just to your left, uh, you kind of confirm that suspicion. You are on the street right outside of uh, one of the main lodging areas in Wolf's Hold. How the fuck did we get to this backwater town? I, I, I don't even... I hate this place. I fucking hate this place. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I hate this. Mm. Are you talking in character or OC? Both. They're both? They're both. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have one more spell point that I can use for that. I'm going to use uh, sending again and send it to Ramash because he's the only one that I can truly <laughs> trust. <laughs> truly trust in this. Okay. Um, Ramash... Somehow, we're not in Beacon Beacon. anymore. We're in Wolf's Haven. Wolf's Wolf's Hold. I don't know how to fix this problem. I send it to Ramash. And you can send me back a a 20-word message. Okay, so Ramash, you hear this in your head. What's your response? Um, all right, coming to save your ass. Send. <laughs> Feel like I'm texting. It's it's basically D and D texting. 
like D and D texting for uh, fucking Gen Xers. <laughs> <laughs> Real, real, yes. cl- real clunky and uh, full of mistakes. <laughs> yeah, you know we all be like sending each other emojis and three letter <laughs> abbreviations, oh, and understanding what that means. I should have sent him a bear with a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been more on brand. <laughs> next time, next time. <laughs> Speaking of next time, Hi. as you uh, as you send this uh, this message to Ryder, we are gonna. Leave it there. One group has been lost in some sort of a projection of Wolf's Hold, and the other is in the Vault of Reach. How will we resolve this? We'll find out next time.